Okay, so we're back here continuing to talk about <clears throat> fluid mechanics and hydraulics. And in the last set of videos, we started looking at uh, analyzing pipe network systems where you have more than one pipe. And we talked about how you can analyze two pipes that are connected in series and went through an example and did that. And we also talked about how you can calculate the various components of the head, the pressure, elevation, and velocity head components at different points, and you know how we can kind of think of it as like a state variable that <clears throat> has a value and it gradually decreases as you move down the pipeline. Uh, and then we can use energy balances to figure out what the different values of those components are as you move across a pipeline. And so I want to continue kind of talking some more about pipes today and we're going to start by talking about uh, pipes that are connected in parallel okay so when two pipes are connected in parallel I mentioned this before but the head loss is the same in each pipe and there are two reasons why this might be the case you can one is because you can think of the head is a state variable so if something is a state variable, it means that the path you take doesn't matter. It's going to have the same value no matter what path you take. And so if we have two different paths between two junctions, so if I have a point here and a point here and I take this path or that path, uh, either way, I end up at the same value at the end. So that means that the head has to be the, the same there with this state variable kind of concept. Uh, the other way to, another way to maybe think about that is just that water follows the, the path of least resistance. And so because the two pipes are gonna be connected in parallel, the resistance in each one has to be the same, which means the loss has to be the same in each pipe. Otherwise you wouldn't have any flow in, in one of the pipes. So. <clears throat> so really this is the key idea is that the head loss is going to be the same and now let, everything else about this is going to be similar to single pipe problems but let's do an example to help kind of illustrate that so here we're told that there's a pipeline that has 20 degrees celsius water flowing at one meters cubed per second one meter cubed per second and it's water at 20 degrees means our kinematic viscosity 10 to the minus sixth diameter and length of the first pipe so yeah we're told that it branches here and we've got two different ways to go from one pipe to the next a and b so the first pipe it says uh, is d d1 is 40 centimeters and L1 is 1,000 meters. And then the second we have D2 is equal to 50 centimeters. And L2 is 500 meters. Okay. And so this is the Q, you know, one meters cubed per second in, but then it splits between these two different paths. And it says that they're both uh, average concrete. And if we were to go look that up in the table, this turns into our roughness height that we would look up. So E1, and that value is 0.36 millimeters. They're average. And then this one is also rough, uh, sorry, average concrete. So its roughness height is going to be the same. No reason that these have to be the same. No reason that we have to use water at 10 to the minus 6 for these kind of problems, but it, all it is is just going to change that number. Everything will be the same if you had other conditions. So both pipes are made of average concrete. Now find the head loss uh, between the points and the flow rate in each pipe. All right. So uh, best thing with a lot of these problems is to draw a diagram if you don't have one already to look at. And so I think that we have got the diagram drawn and I think that we have the given information here all the known things written down so let's write down what we don't know because it's a lot of things actually so 
each of these pipes is going to have a flow, so we don't know what that is. That's what we need to find. This one meters cube per second is going to split between those two. And because we don't know the flow, we don't know the velocities. So we don't know the velocity in either one, and those can be different. They have different diameters, and they're going to have different flows, so they're going to have different velocity, probably. Uh, because we don't know the velocity, we don't know the Reynolds number. And again, they're different diameters, different velocities, so there's no reason to think the Reynolds number is going to be the same. Then we don't know the friction factor because we don't know the Reynolds number. We don't know what the friction factor is, so that could be different in each pipe also. And then last one is we don't know the head loss, delta H1 or delta H2. We're not given that information. So we have lots and lots of unknowns. How in the world? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 unknowns. 10 unknowns, so that means technically we need 10 equations. And But luckily, really, we have a lot of equations we can use, and they're mostly not super complicated. Okay, so what I would, you know, the key, there's two really key equations that we're going to need to use here. One of those is going to be, we know the one meter cube per second is going to have to split into two pieces, so we want to write that down mathematically, and we're going to get Q1 plus Q2 has got to be equal to 1. Okay whatever we get for Q1 and Q2, it needs to add up to that. So this is something unique to this problem. And then the other thing is we know that the head loss has to be the same. So delta H1 has to equal to delta H2. So these are our two kind of key equations here for this particular problem. The other equations we need are all things we've done many times before. So if we know Q1, we could immediately get Q2 from this equation. And then if we knew those, we can get the velocity from the diameters which we have and with once we've got the velocity we can get the Reynolds numbers once we've gotten the Reynolds numbers and we have our relative roughness from the heights uh, that are given we could go in and calculate the friction factors and once we have the friction factors then we can get Delta H1 and Delta H2 and then we can check and see if this is true okay so basically all we really need is one of the flow rates and then everything else will just sort of follow pretty straightforward but we don't know either flow rate so what we're going to have to do the procedure to work this problem and it's like all the other ones is going to be we're going to guess q1 we're just going to guess something and then we can get Q2 from this one, and then we can get V1 and V2 from our Q equals VA equation. We can get the Reynolds numbers, and then we can get the friction factors, F1 and F2. Then we can get delta H1 and delta H2. Okay, so again, this is pretty straightforward. Once we guess one of these, all these other things just come out of that. And then uh, we can check closure. Check closure. So it's the same thing. We're going to guess a value, and then we're going to follow that logic through, and we're going to see whether that guess is correct using our closure condition, which is going to be that those head losses need to be the same. If that it doesn't close, then we're going to have to go back. Okay, until it does close. All right, so hopefully that idea makes sense. So why don't we start here by guessing, and this is maybe not the smartest guess. So, so which one of these, before we even do any math, you can kind of guess which of these is gonna have more flow in it. So this has got a bigger diameter and it's shorter. So what does that tell you? This one's gonna have to have more flow less resistance. If you stick it through a small pipe, it's going to be more work to push it through there. So we would expect more of the flow to go through the second pipe. So a smart guess might be that more of it is in the, the second pipe, but I, I started by just guessing that it was a 50-50 split. So guessing that Q1 is equal to 0.5. Okay. And so then we get Q2 is also 0.5. 
and then we can get v1 is q over pi over 4 d1 squared. So that's going to be 0.5 over pi over 4 and 0.4 squared gives me 3.98 and that's going to be meters per second. And now, I guess that should be Q1, Q2, D2 squared, 0.5 over pi over 4 times 0.5 squared, diameter of that one, gets me 2.55, Reynolds number 1, D1, V1 over nu, is going to be 0.4, putting it in meters, times 3.98 over 10 to the minus 6th gives me 1.6 times 10 to the 6th. Reynolds 2, D2, V2 over nu is 0.5 times 2.55 over 10 to the minus 6th is going to give me 1.3 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, and now I can then, I'm, the next step I'm going to need to get my friction factor. So I'm going to write my relative roughness. Oh, I ran down the page there if you missed that. So relative roughness E1 over D1 is 0.36 over 0.4, which is... 0.009 E2 over D2 is uh, point let's see 36 over 0.5 which comes out to be 0 0.00072 all right so those are my E over D values uh, now I've got my Reynolds numbers so I can plug those into the Swami Jane equation or look them up on the Moody chart. And I'm just going to tell you that when I did this, I got 0 0.0194 for F1 and F2 is 0 0.0185. And we'll say from SJ equation in parentheses. Okay, I'm not gonna write all that out. Um, now I can get Delta H1. F1, L1 over D1, V1 squared over 2G, 0.0194, or Moody, I guess for this, uh, 0.0194, L1 is 1000 over 0 0.4, uh, 3.98, squared over 2 times, I guess we're, the thing I should have noted up here was that G is 9.81 meters per second squared, because we're working a metric. And so if I run that through, I get 39.2 meters. Likewise for delta H2, F2, L2 over D2, V2 squared over 2G, <clears throat> point zero uh, one eight five times five hundred over point five times two point five five squared over two times nine point eight one and that gives me six point one meters. Not surprisingly, <clears throat> the flow rate or the head loss is much smaller for the reasons we mentioned before because it's a bigger diameter and a smaller pipe so so that means that <clears throat> what is this telling us q1 is too big because we're dividing we need to divide it such that the head losses are going to be the same and so we got a lot bigger head loss for q1 if we make q1 smaller this will get smaller and then that'll make q2 bigger and this will get bigger so this is really the key thing so <clears throat> so basically what we can do here is we might then assume and i'm going to kind of do this over here 
So let's say that Q1 equals 0 0.4 and Q2 is equal to 0 0.6. <clears throat> so Q1 was too big. We're going to go through and do it again. If I go through and uh, follow all those same steps, I'm going to get delta H1 is 25.2 and delta H2 is 8.8. .8. So what that tells me is that it is uh, still too big, and so repeat, and then we're going to end up eventually figuring out that Q1 is about 0.28 meters cubed per second, and then Q2 has to be 0.72 meters cubed per second, and then you can get the... Uh, head loss for, for using either one of those values. I actually don't have that written down here, but anyway, so that's how you can analyze two pipes that are connected in, in parallel. Okay, so it's all, almost all the same steps, just we have to remember that the head loss is the same either path and that we have to have conservation of mass at these junctions. So conservation of mass, conservation of energy, or is another way to think about it. So, um, so that's pipes in parallel, and in the next video, we will talk about analyzing pipe junctions.